have. Tell me about this club that you're opening. Comedy club? Yeah. Had a conversation once with Chris Rock. Yeah, I love Chris Rock, too. I love all comedians, but but Chris uh, and I were talking about, and this is an interesting question. I'm going to see how you feel about it. I said, how many seats are you optimal? Like, when you look at a crowd, how many people do you want to see out there where you feel like, I'm home? Chris said, like 6,000. <laughs> I, mean, I forget sometimes, got a big, big star. <sighs> Me, 200. That's like a sweet spot for me. That's why I love playing the punchline, you know. Mm-hmm. But but I don't even need that many. The belly room, one of my favorite rooms on earth is the belly room of the comedy store. Yep. That's like 70 seats soaking mm-hmm. wet, right? Yep. I would make this club 120. This club is not for people who are trying to count the gate. This club is for people who want to, like, rock, like, really get into some shit, like, try some shit out. Yeah. It's like it's like when that alternative scene in in the nineties, for people at home, Joe, I'm not saying this, I know you know, but in the nineties it was an alternative, what they called an alternative comedy scene. This was Patton Oswalt and Janine Garofalo and and, and uh, Dave Cross, Bob Odenkirk, these type of people, and it became real popular. It became like a scene, and I would check it out. Now, traditional club comics hated that scene. They resented it because the things that was going on there, these these jokes weren't structured. It was more, it was like a lab almost. People would go there and try shit out. What was interesting about it to me wasn't what the comedians were trying as much as it was the way the crowds would listen to them. Like it was one of these setups. If you went there and just did your act, you know, no matter how funny your act is, that's not what they wanted to see. What they wanted to see was someone take a chance. And that shit was like heaven on earth. Mm. When a crowd pushes someone to just try some stuff. They don't right. you don't have to land the trick, but the beauty is in the attempt. Just try it. Just whatever this thing is that you're worried, it makes you nervous or uncomfortable. And that that scene made a, a profound impression on me. That that was possible, that you could make a crowd into that. Cause I'm you know, comedians are addicted to the process of refinement. You know, a guy like Seinfeld, is, he would never do a podcast because it's such a spontaneous, off-the-cuff endeavor. And and his skill as a comedian, one of his super, super duper powers, Jerry Seinfeld, is like a, a well-refined comedian. He can take an abstraction and make it a refined piece. This scene didn't have any of that refinement. Seinfeld does that, but then he also does that cars, comedians getting cars with, in cars getting coffee show. Yeah. Where he's like a podcast. He's loose. I, I did that show. I enjoyed it, actually. We did it in D.C. What kind of car did you drive? A French piece of shit. <laughs> it, like, broke down. I don't think they cut did that it? out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a good-looking car, but it was a piece of shit. He's in the, well, he's mostly into Porsches. His most of his thing is Porsches. If he's driving those other cars, it's really more for show, I think. But it reminds me, that show reminds me of you a little bit in the sense that it's about his passions. Yeah. He loves cars. He loves comedians. He loves comedy. Yeah. And apparently he likes coffee. The Jay Leno, you ever done Jay Leno's Garage? No. I've done that. He is so much better at that show than... At least the way, I, not that he was bad at hosting the Tonight Show, but he's himself. He really is himself. Like, he doesn't have to dress up. He wears, like, the same shit every day, like a jean shirt and jean pants. And he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't give a fuck what he looks like. He's got no hair and makeup on the set. He just wants to talk about cars. Mm-hmm. The guy's got, like, hundreds of cars. He's got warehouses filled with cars. Full-time employees all over the place, like, working on it. Boop, boop. All these people. He's got fabricators, people that make sheet metal, like, fix fenders and shit and all kinds of stuff. And the fucking man loves cars. And I brought my 1965 Corvette in. And just he and I just geeking out over lines. And Steve Strope, the guy who built my car, he came with me and... You know, we, we talked about all the various aspects of the car and all the improvements, all the different things that he had done to it. And you can see Jay Leno going over it. He knows the details of the 1965, the original motor. Meh. 
No, he starts talking wow. about all the different things, and then and then he drove it. He's the only one other than me that's ever driven that car. Really? Yeah, and he takes it out. Boom, we go out to the hills and went up into Los Angeles, Crest Forest, you know? Man, he took me out one night. You had, you had a hot one. That Porsche used to drive. Oh, yeah, I still got that. That was a hot one, bro. That was fun. That night was wild. And, and, and you started doing the motherfucker. You know, we was up in them Hollywood Hills. He started yeah. doing them James Dean turns. I got scared. <laughs> I got scared. I said, Joe, what are you doing? That car's glued to the ground, though. Oh, I know. That's what you were demonstrating yeah. to me. Yeah. You were whipping that shit. Oh, that was the night we went to the, uh, Naomi Campbell's yeah. book release party. Yeah. That shit was fun, though. It was wild. It wasn't that weird. It was weird to me. Well, because you weren't expecting it. Yeah. You, you, you were just at the comedy club. I ran into you. Yeah. And was like, yo, I need DD. Let's go to this party, Joe. Blah, blah, blah. We were so high, too. I was like, okay, let's go. It was fun, man. It was really fun, but it was... It was like, you know, I thought it was just going to be a regular night at the store. Next thing you know, we're in an elevator that's going up the side of the hill. Oh, that mount. Yeah, that was crazy. Weird. It's and a there's nice a house. giant naked picture of Naomi Campbell on the side of the building. Remember that? No. I, no of course, a- course I do. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. It was like 40 foot tall nude. It was crazy. And then you get in there and there's all these famous people. This is one of my favorite parts of the night. We're sitting around and you and I are talking. You go, man. I would not want to be famous like these people. And I looked at you and go, dude, you're the most famous person here. That's hilarious. (laughs) 